If you're collecting reserve list cards, be very careful. There's sharks in the water. Hi everyone and welcome back. MTG Moxman here. Thanks again for hanging out with me for another top 10 reserve list edition. That's right guys, the hottest selling cards on the reserve list and it's a little unusual today. I'm going to explain and then we'll get to the actual video from number 10 to number one. This week's video is a little unusual. Although um, I got the stats and the data together, some of it was given to me. I've been looking in the last couple of weeks to find out what's been happening on the reserve list when it came to dual lands. I noticed an exceptional amount disappearing and a group of gentlemen have finally stepped forward and give me a little bit of information. They were selective with what they gave me, but we'll go through that as we do the video today. Let's just say they're definitely keeping things kind of low key and not putting a lot of emphasis on what they're doing, but they did tell me, yes, they're doing it because they are trying to increase their positions in certain cards. And that's where I found things interesting because I noticed it, but I couldn't quite pick it all apart. And now it makes a lot more sense because it's been week after week and now we get a little more detail. So thanks again to the gentleman for stepping forward. Okay, guys, I know you're not giving me all the data and you said I could use this, so I appreciate it. Thanks again. So anyone who's watching my video today, this information and receipts have been provided by this group, as well as regular sales added onto this to form out this week's top 10. Interesting, a lot of fun, but it lets you know that just because something happens, doesn't mean you're going to see it. It doesn't mean you're going to catch it. I definitely do not catch every single sale that happens on the reserve list. I focus on it. I pay attention to it. But with 572 cards and low volume cards lately haven't been caught, 10, 12, 15 sales doesn't even make the list right now because of the amount of players diving into the reserve list. But when you have five cards going in, and those cards are two, three, four hundred dollars each. That's still a couple thousand dollars in a seven day period. It just doesn't make the list because it goes by volume. So this list, you guys do the math. Let me know what you think at the end of the video. I'm looking forward to sharing this with you guys and some of the other data that I can include because it's happened in previous weeks, but we're going to talk about it. Let's start this video off from number 10 to number one. You've waited long enough. Let's get to some really crazy stuff. All right, guys, we're starting out at number 10 this week with Lake of the Dead. From Alliances, 37 sales this week, April 29th to May 5th of 2023. The average cost is $109.99. The market price is $96.55 US, 66 euro, 69 cents to get this card into your house. And of course, if you're buying this card in Canada, it's around $135 Canadian for a near mint copy and there's not a lot around. For those who have not seen Lake of the Dead in a while, guys, this card comes into play. You gotta sacrifice a swamp or bury Lake of the Dead, but you can tap to add one black to your mana pool or sacrifice a swamp to add four black to your mana pool. This is an amazing card that I love to see and it deserves to be on this list all the time. Guys, this is a great card for number 10. Congratulations to those purchasing this card. I think you made a smart buy. And the sheer volume of sales last couple of weeks, you can see there's actually a tail of an uptick on the end of the uh, financial sheet from MTG Stocks. And that's because it's week after week. It hasn't made the, the top 10 here, but there have been consistent sales. Let's go ahead and take a look at number nine. And that is Taiga. 39 sales this week. April 29th to May 5th. Average price, 400 and six dollars 77 cents us market price 375 dollars and 97 cents us 251 euro 87 cents to get this card to your house and it's around 475 dollars canadian for a near mint copy here now this is where things are going to stay you know take a little bit of a, a quirky turn a lot of the cards you're going to see today i'm going to add little bits of data how about if i told you guys that this card has sold 10 copies every week for the last seven months, seven months, consistently selling 10 copies a week. Add that up in your calculator. Look at the different variances. This is a lot of money being funneled into these cards. Now, the gentlemen say this is not always them, but they are picking up copies whenever they get the chance. And it is each and every week. 
and there's a group of them doing it together. So this is your number nine card, 39 sales this week. And in case you were wondering how many are around, there is not that many cards of Taiga to buy. You can find a couple on TCG player. Local stores have a little bit here and there, but they are disappearing. And the ones on eBay, of course, have all kinds of import fees, extra taxes, depending on what you're purchasing. And that's why those ones are still available. Very interesting to see, but let's go ahead and take a look at number eight. Underground C revised edition. 41 sales this week, April 29th to May 5th. An average price of $852.49 US. The market price, $698.32. €509.86 to get this card in your house. Here in Canada, it's around $1,050 Canadian. I did find two copies available. And yes, they're near mint, but they're very expensive, which is why they're still sitting there. Lower end dual lands are being cleared out even locally where I am. But again, the gentleman will claim credit for a lot of this. I've been shown a lot of receipts over the last several months of consistent sales from varying markets, from local stores, overseas, uh, card market. Guys, they are buying them up. They are adding to their positions week on week. And the reason I never picked it up early enough is there wasn't a large enough volume. But they, they admit they may have made a slight mistake and they bought a few too many because they got some uh, bonus checks, you know, a little bit of a tax return, and they've been funneling a little extra cash in. And that's probably why they said I got a little bit of a wind of it. So it's very interesting to see cards like this continue to buy and sell. But it's the idea that the market is having less and less being freed back into the market. Although there's no major price upticks on a lot of these cards, the volumes are disappearing. There's just not as many available as players either trading collections or individuals are adding positions for commander decks, which is what this group of people is doing. Let's go ahead and take a look at your next card. Number seven is Bayou. 47 sales this week, April 29th to May 5th, 2023. Average price tag, $428 US. Market price, $404.91. 308 euro 12 cents to get this card in your house now interesting you can find this card heavily played i think at face-to-face -face games um and moderately played for around the 400 and change marks if you're looking for a copy locally here in toronto that's probably your best bet unless you're looking for unlimited and by the way this is strictly revised and some collector edition they are not hitting anything that is unlimited because of the price point and because they do plan on either flipping and reselling these down the road as well as holding on for their own commander decks for the future. Very, very cool stuff. And of course, Bayou is one of the amazing cards we love to see. So hey, why not? It's great sales, but the sheer volume and cost, we're talking tens of thousands of dollars. Now, Plateau is the next card at number six this week. Average price tag, $359.99 US. Market price is $331.21. 213 euro 11 cents to get this card into your house and of course here in canada it's around 500 bucks interestingly enough near mint copies only but this is 50 sales this week again and this by the way is not just that group of people but a lot of sales in general they admit that this is not all of them they kind of stick to the 10 copies a week of different types each and every week which means a lot of other players are taking advantage of some of the sales we've seen some of the deals we've been having and players are picking these cards up and it's definitely for the commander format don't forget plateau is one of those amazing cards players love to see love to use and yes i didn't size this one right you can blame the mocks man i will take full credit for being sleepyhead and not doing this right but that's okay because it's what we're talking about that matters and plateau is an amazing card Let's go ahead and take a look at number five this week. Scrubland, 55 sales this week. Average price tag, $346.16 US. Market price, $337.79. 224 euro, 55 cent to get this card into your house. Here in Canada, around $450 Canadian for a near mint copy. Keep that stuff in mind. And by the way, there were none available when I looked. Only unlimited copies, which are almost double that price. Keep that in mind, guys. Scrubland is an amazing card. All the dual lands are because they get played in Commander. They also get played in Vintage and Legacy, all kinds of crazy kitchen table stuff I like to play. But this here is one of those cards. All these dual lands are, and this is what a lot of players aspire to get, to either trade up into this value, but at the same time, after they have it, they hold on to them knowing that the price point just gets steeper and steeper. And this is where the gentlemen come into play. They realized this last year, 
during the end of 2022 that the prices were too low for a lot of these cards and they started buying in very slowly and they actually went for heavily played to moderately played copies because they were so much cheaper and they could trade modern stuff they weren't playing anymore crazy stuff guys all right we are going to go ahead and we are going to take a look at the number four card this week that is tundra 58 sales you notice how close a lot of these sales are this week 58 sales april 29th to may 5th average price tag $515.08 US, market price $476.17 US, 321 euro 44 cent to get this card to your house. Now there was a copy at 401 Games, I think it was a CGC graded, um, or maybe it was a, yeah I think it was CGC for like, it was a CGC 4 for like 450 bucks, that was a pretty good deal. Whoever grabbed that, smart play, smart play, I was watching to see who would buy it, that got bought out this week, as well as a couple of copies from Harry T., Great stuff, guys. Now, this card again, this is blue white, guys. If anything with blue in it is kind of kind of pricey. Now, interesting, uh, Tropical Island's not on the list this week, guys. Tropical is not here. The sales were uh, Tropical and Volcanic were in the low 20s, so they actually didn't make the cutoff. If you're wondering about those cards, they're not on the list this week. They didn't make it. They didn't make the sales list. All right, guys, we are going down to number three. Fork. See, we got a little bit of a skew here now. Fork from Revised Edition, 63 sales this week. Now, the average price tag, $41.39 US. Market price, $41.27 US. 24 euro, 28 cents to get this card to your house. It's around 60 bucks in Canada for a near mint copy. But if you guys are shopping on TCG Player, you can find these for $27 moderately played. And of course, my moment of, of shilling for myself to try to earn some cash if you guys are going to be shopping on TCG Player anyway, you can click on the link in the description of every video I make. There's a TCG Player affiliate link. When you click that link and go shopping on TCG Player, anything you buy, the Moxman, the channel here, we get a 3.5% kickback on anything you purchase. So thanks again, guys, for anyone who takes the time to do that. I really appreciate it. But here we have Fork, guys. And again, it is an underpriced card. It has been as high as $170, $180 US. Getting it this cheap is a definite steal. It'll probably be on card watch this week just because the price is at that level where it's a little too cheap. I'll probably bring it up, guys, but that's where we're at. So let's now go ahead and take a look at the number two card, and that is Savannah. Now, I want you to think about this. This card is $349.50. The market price is $350.09 US. 71 sales. That means every three sales is roughly $1,000 US. We're talking tens of thousands of dollars in the cards we've seen today, probably closer to a quarter mil when you take in the last couple of weeks. This is crazy sales for these cards, and these are just the ones I'm capturing. We're not including the Talarian Academies and cards that sold three, four, or five copies, right? Even a couple of our Givians sold, our archaeologists. Now, it's 217 euro, 37 cents to get this card in your house. I couldn't find it locally where I was looking, so I have no Canadian price, but I think it was around 450 to 500 bucks. But 71 sales is a lot. And again, the, the gentlemen say they didn't actually buy a lot of the cards this week. They bought roughly five to 10 copies of every single dual land, okay, as a group. So they're always buying five to 10 each and every week, which is why lots of week I don't catch anything, but, but they've given up, you know, they say it doesn't really change what they're doing. So they're telling me that much information, which is great to see. So you guys are hearing it first on this channel. It's great to know somebody finally stepped forward so I can find this stuff out. But now we're going to number one. We've gone down the yellow brick road. You've gone from number 10 to number one. And here we are, your number one card this week. It's Rainbow Veil. Vale. That's right, guys. Rainbow Veil. Vale because my channel, we did a buyout on, what was that, Sun? That was last Sunday. It was one of the cards on the wheel. Rainbow Veil, vale, guys. An amazing card from Fallen Empires. That's right. I said it. Fallen Empires. 118 sales. Average price tag is only $7.92 US. Market price is $8.75 US. This card should be easily 50 bucks, and it's not. So until it hits that point, I can say it's still a really good deal to grab this card and go for the near mint copies. Invest in it now. And yes, I said invest. Invest in this card. Get it while it's cheap. For those who haven't seen it or never caught this before, this is a Fallen Empires land that has tapped to add one mana of any color to your mana pool. And then at the end of your turn, you got to pass it to an opponent, very strategic inside a commander game. But there's lots of ways of unsummoning it, killing it, all kinds of crazy stuff to bring it back for yourself. It's, it's an amazing card, okay? Now, let me just say things off here and end this. 
Thanks again for the information. I really appreciate it. And yes, I needed the backing. So I know you guys are probably watching this video. I needed the backing of the receipts to make sure it was all in the up and up. So thanks again. And the amount you bought over that long period of time, kudos to you. I mean, I don't know these guys' cash flow, but it's got to be pretty high to do that kind of continuous buying. So way to go. I hope things are working out for you. I hope this is like part of your master plan. Um, and to everyone else on the channel, everyone who's catching this video today, thanks again for being here and checking this stuff out. I find this stuff so fascinating to see how people decide on which cards to buy and why. But when it comes to dual lands, I always think that's a good buy. I always do because if you're going to buy it to play with it and keep it, the, the type of copy doesn't matter. It can be heavily played, moderately played. Uh, near mint if it's near mint i don't like playing with them because they're just too good a shape but if i want to play with a copy i just want the real deal I, I i don't care if i ever resell it i want to own it i don't want to proxy it i mean i understand players who can't afford it are going to go and do that they're going to use that as a viable option for themselves because they don't care about the real thing they just want to play the game but for those people who want the real card you know you're gonna have to pony up some real cash to get it and i only see dual lands climbing in value over a very long period but at the same time it's gonna have ups and downs no matter how many people buy the revised amount printed is so large and there's still so much out there although it seems like it's kind of drained right now from the market it will come back no matter what uh the gentlemen here are doing or any of us out there there it's revised there's a lot out there okay a lot so eventually people will start picking apart the collections that the price goes too high. Somebody's going to want to cash in and get some money for it. So thanks again for being here. Thanks for hanging out with me on the channel. Thanks to everyone who slams a comment down in the comment section, gives the video a thumbs up. And of course, to all the new subscribers helping me get closer to 20,000 subs and allow, you know, checks out my channel every day and allows me to entertain you guys. Thanks again for being here. It's really awesome to be able to interact with everyone each and every day. Guys, have an awesome day. Looking forward to the live stream, 6.30 Eastern Standard Time every Sunday. We will be talking about this. I'll see you guys soon. And of course, a big shout out and thank you to all my fantastic patrons on the channel who support the video creation and content of this channel each and every day. Without you guys, it wouldn't be happening. So thanks again. And to everyone who stuck around to the very end, you're awesome. You made it to the end of the video. Welcome back. Thanks for being here. So yeah, I was contacted by this uh, group of gentlemen. I don't know how many people are in the group, by the way. If you're gonna ask me that, I don't know. They didn't give me specific numbers. They just sent some documentation showing the sales, okay? Uh, and because of addresses and stuff, I'm not allowed to show any of that stuff. And they said not to blot things out, just don't show it. So I'm not showing anything, I'm not sharing that stuff. They told me not to. Um, but it's the idea that those kind of sales are happening. If it's, think about it, five of every dual land, 10 of every dual land every week, blew my mind. I wish I had that kind of disposable income. But I guess as a group of people, even when we buy stuff out here on the channel, we can do that. Imagine on a live stream with 100 people that you all decide to buy a card like we do with Soul Devi and you just make it disappear. It can happen. So with a higher pool of money to work with, imagine the damage you can do. It just shows the sharks in the ocean are there and they're swimming and they're, and they're being quiet and they're gliding and they're trying not to disturb the waters. They're trying not to let people know what they're doing until they strike. And I don't know if they're actually going to resell the cards at some point. I kind of got that vibe myself. Um, I assume at some point they'll want to capitalize on some of that cash flow when prices go up, if they ever go up again, because these cards could go to zero. It's cardboard, don't forget. Your cardboard kingdom can fall down. But I just don't think it will for, for lands that are always going to be needed in Commander. And it's such a popular format. It just makes too much sense. But anyway, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for being here on the channel. I'm looking forward to talking to you guys about this. This is crazy stuff. And I know this is one of those discussions we can have on the live stream and have a little back and forth. So I'll see you guys then. Have an awesome day, man.